the brakes when I need them. <laughs> that, that's an understatement, I would say. You're rolling along. Good luck to you, and good luck on your first trip. Getting underway, Ron Hansen, today's challenger. And he begins with a lob, which is an uncomfortable way to start, obviously, since it is your very first appearance on the program. And I'm sure that he has some jitters, a little bit nervous. I remember I was nervous the first time I came on this program, and all I had to do was uh, introduce a commercial, I guess. It's a seven. I told you his average and his roll-off score. He has a high single of 178 and a high triple of 435. Now he has a strike in the second box. Peter Surrett. Five consecutive wins. Same league average, as I mentioned, 120. His high single is 189, his high triple is 454. It's an eight box. Two pull on the head pin. He leaves the three six on the right, four seven on the left. He has a piece of wood which is rolling just to the left of the number three in pretty good spot. Yes, and he made the spare. Went to just the right side of that three pin and managed to kick the piece of wood and the three pin over to get the four seven while the ball was carrying the six. Pull. Two pull on the head pin for our challenger today, Ron Hansen. Now for a second. He still has three pins standing. The two, the four, and the seven. He got a little too full on the two, left the four seven. Corners are full, seven and ten standing. Now he has two pieces of wood in favorable position. They're just about where the four pin would be. Now, just as he started, another piece of wood, which is over nearer to the ten pin, began to roll. Too bad, he was just too full on that seven pin, and what he was trying to do was uh, exactly what he should do, and that was to try, to it's a nine, which was to just shave the left side of those two pins and kick them over. Peter Surrett, working on a spare. Here is the fill, he gets seven, and he leaves a triangle on the right-hand side. That's made up of the three, five, and six. Missed the three, took out the five. It's a nine. Oh, he got a big break as the two pin went down. And now they all go down. So, with two bonus balls still to be thrown by our defending champion, Peter Surrett, the score after four boxes of the first string is Surrett, 44, Hansen, 41. Six on the first. He has the uh, three pin, seven, nine, and ten, and wood in front. Nine pins still there. So the fill is nine. And he gets a 10. Now Peter Surratt, 
our defending champion. And remember, he is working on a strike. First bonus ball. Gets him eight. He's looking at the three and the six. For a spare, yes, he has it. He now has two marks in a row, and as most of you know, three marks in a row in the same string. $50 in bonus money. He got six, leaves the four horsemen left side. Yes! Oh, that was pretty. I mean, that was a picture-perfect four horsemen left side, right in that one-two pocket, and zap! Two full on the head pin for Ron Hansen, today's challenger. He is a postal clerk, is single, and uh, is representing the Lucky Strike Lanes in Lynn. That time, he went right through the open space that he had punched out. So it is a six. Al Gilio keeping score on the electronic scoreboard as usual. Diamond right plus the 10 pin. Three, five, six, nine, and 10. Nope. He missed the three pin. He has left the three and the five. Keith Williams is keeping score on the big board for the folks who are here watching. It's an eye. Don Riley is our statistician and coordinator. Ralph Stewart is our lob line judge and referee. Very thin. There's Ralph with one of his fancy sweaters. Very nice, very nice. Little touch of class. I'll tell you, it's nice, it's nice to have a little touch of luck. Three marks in a row, $50 in bonus money. Now looking at the two, four, six, and 10. Nope, he had a piece of wood that was in front of it. It's a six. All right, no. It's a six. And if you saw some, if you saw the pins toppling, it was because uh, Peter had pressed the reset button. Ron Hansen, our challenger right now, looking at a side saddle triangle made up of the two, five, and eight, and a piece of wood rolling around. Just missed the two. And he also leaves it for a nine box. He's got side-by-side uh, -side pins, seven and eight. It is an eight. Uh, to, to explain again, as Peter Surratt comes up, if you saw pins toppling, he had already pressed the reset button. The uh, red light had come on, and then some more pins began to, to uh, tumble. However, since he had acknowledged that that was what he was accepting, the six at that particular time, by pressing the reset button, even though the sweep had not come down, any pins that were to fall after he had pressed the uh, reset button and the red light had come on would not count. Okay? Okay. 
to nine. He has a strike. Now at 123 with two bonus balls to roll. First ball nets him six, leaves him the two, four, seven on the left, the ten over on the right, two pieces of wood in between. And he punches out the four pin. So it is a fill of seven and a 130. So another $50 in bonus money for winning the first string for our defending champion, Peter Surratt, who wins it by a score of 130 to 102. It's the middle string. That means our defending champion leads it off. Here he is, Peter Surratt. Boy, he gets a lot of action. For a moment, it appeared he was going to have another strike, but a couple of pieces of wood went over and stopped in front of the standing nine and ten. Now he's waiting for one of those pieces of wood to come back and stop about where the three pin would be. He got the 10, but not the 9. A 10. Everything down except the kingpin. The five. Ooh, he has not, I'll tell you, in five previous weeks, he has not missed many of those singles. Now our challenger, Ron Hansen of Winthrop. Four horsemen left side. That's what he's looking at. That's the spare leave. Just missed the head pin, took out the two, four, and seven. today is Skip Peabody, Chris O'Hare, Jeff Sullivan, Judy Guild, and in post-production videotape, George Ellard. Ron looking at four horsemen right side plus five, seven, and nine. He has left the six and ten. Bill Rubin, of course, is our producer and director. Now moving to lane three here at the fairway is Peter Surrett. And he has left the five pin. It's rocking back and forth with a piece of wood right up against it, but it didn't go down for a strike, but it will, I'm sure, go down for a spare. And it does. comes back with a strike. Ron Hansen, our challenger. He has left a triangle made up of the four, seven, and eight. And 
and he has converted that for a spare. Eight is the fill. Three and six are the two pins standing. No wood to help. Is he going to get it? Oh, two full on the three. Six is still there. He makes it a ten. After four boxes of the middle string with two bonus balls still to be thrown by our defending champion Peter Surrett, he is leading in this string 50 to 48. Halfway point. Fifth box, middle string. Peter Surrett, our defending champion. First ball of his uh, fill after the strike. Just two. Four is the fill. It's a nine. comes back with another strike. A hammer. Here's Ron Hansen, today's challenger. One and seven are the two pins standing, and he has wood in between. One piece in favorable position. his decision now he fires they got it spare in the fifth bonus he got nine he has the seven pin to pick up Now you can see the pin, you can see Ron, and watch his reaction. He's got it! <laughs> Peter Surrett working on a strike. He has two strikes in a row! And when he first came on, back on uh, the 30th of uh, November, he had three strikes in a row. That was the day he beat Gary Casey and rolled a 453. I shall say no more. <laughs> Missed by one. The 10 pin stayed up. Four pieces of wood clustered around that 10 pin. Now he makes it for a spare. And another $50 in bonus money. Ron Hansen, today's challenger. And he gets eight on his spare, but he has side-by-side -side pins to seven and eight. Three pieces of wood over on the right. And now uh, I assume that he's going to try to do something with those. Oh, he went too far to the right and didn't touch them. Now he'll just go for one. No, he tried to use the wood again and left both of them.
good hit. He had an eight pin drop. And the two pins standing are the two and the five with wood between them. It goes, and he has a spare in the eighth. Three marks in a row up on the board. Actually, it would have been six in a row, except for one box in between. And a thin hit. Just three. And now... The three and the four. Tough to move that. So he went for the four. It's a nine box. 134. Had an opening string of 130. Already at 264. Plus this box. And he has a chance for another mark. Three and six. And yes, he has another mark. 144 plus. Obviously, Peter Serret is the leader for our next True Value Championship show the last Saturday in August. He gets five more. 149. Working on a spare in the eighth box, here is Ron Hansen, today's challenger. He dropped that one much too soon. Just three, that's all he got. Tried to come back and make another, but he has left two pins. Five and eight. Got the five. Nine box. 115. As I told you, his league average is 120. He has a box to go. He's at 115. One, three, six, and nine on the right, four and seven on the left, and he almost pulled it off. The nine pin didn't go. It was a nice shot. And another $50 in bonus money for Peter Surrett as he wins the middle string by a score of 149 to 125. And after two, he leads 279 to 227. String and leading it off is today's challenger, Ron Hansen of Winthrop. Two full on the head pin spread eagle. Two, four, seven, three, six, ten. He almost made it. Took out the left side and also then took out the six and ten. Only the three pin standing now. He just hit the football line with uh, the ball and it threw it off and up so he didn't get the three, so it's a nine. This is a tough one to convert. It's four horsemen left side, and it's a nine pin. There is a piece of wood now in front of the nine pin, and that may make it go. No, not that way. He had to hit the head pin. Peter Surratt. Oh, 
He has just the seven pin. What a great match it was when Peter defeated Gary Casey when he made his appearance as challenger. He has it for fair. He rolled 453. Gary Casey rolled 418. And in their third string, they each rolled 174, 348. Peter leaves one pin, the nine pin. Now waiting for some wood to settle down. to settle down. He needs a 121 to get another 400. He's won five in a row, but only once has he gone over 400, and that was the first one, the 453. And that third string, as they tied it at 174, 174, the highest combined total in one string ever on the program, 348 pins. Ron Hansen now looking at the one, the two, and the seven with wood where the four would be. Piece of wood rolling around and back, and he's waiting for it to settle down as one is supposed to do when following all the rules of cattle pin bowling, which we do here. Miss the head pin. on a spare and actually with two marks in a row and a chance for more bonus money for three marks in a row or more our defending champion Peter Surrett he got eight the two pins that are standing are the eight and the ten but he's hoping that he can do something with two pieces of wood one of them out where the five would be. The other one is to the right. It's hard to tell from here whether it's back far enough to be used. Well, no, we'll soon know. He got the eight and made a try. But no bonus money right now. Ralph Stewart goes down to get a ball that's loose. And gets a hand. Now for a 10 going after the 10 pin, no. A nine box. Had a nice note from uh, Manchester, New Hampshire, a gentleman who just had cataract surgery in both eyes and implants and so forth, and thanking me, obviously, for the fact that I describe things for people who have impaired sight so that they can enjoy the program as well as those of us who are fortunate enough to have a good eyesight. But he adds a little postscript and says, I remember Don Gillis when he did the Red Sox radio broadcast. I didn't think anybody remembered that except my kids. That's a long time ago. All right, looking right now at the one, two, and 10. It's an eight. Not much question about uh, whether uh, Peter Surratt is going to win. I would think with the tremendous lead he has, the only question will be, will he get a 400? In good shape. He's got 54 pins down through four boxes. Oh, 
And Ron Hansen has everything down except the head pin. A 10. Yeah, my Red Sox broadcasting career ended the year before this program started. 1957 was my last play-by-play -play with the Red Sox, and then in 1958, along came Candlepin Bowling. And it's still here, yes. Four horsemen, right side, no. He had to hit the head pin, and he took out three, six, and 10 as a one and seven. It's an eight. Peter Surrett, 54 pins through four boxes. Let's see what he does here. Got a spare leave. It's the six and 10. Yes, he has it. He has been beaten Gary Casey, Doug Smith, Bill Gustafson, Steve Reno, and Jack Sadek. He gets eight and has the same spare leave. Six and ten. But he has wood which is perpendicular to uh, himself and to the pit right now. Let's see whether it will bother him at all. No, he used it the right way. He went to the left side. Now at 82. Plus, here's Ron Hansen, today's challenger. Is he going to get the strike? No. They, everything tumbled to the left, but not enough to get the seven pin. It's still there. Our high-low jackpot, the 1710, is up to $1,250. And our home viewer jackpot is at an even 500. For a spare, no. He hit a piece of wood that was in front of it. It went uh, one way, the ball went the other. The pin was still standing. The ball came back, rolled right across and into the gutter, but the seven pin is still there. A hand again for Ralph. And Ron was all over that seven for a 10. Looked like it was going to be a big hit, but apparently the ball didn't wasn't uh, thrown quite hard enough. Rolled, I should say, quite hard enough. Seven pin is still there. A ten. Peter Surratt has two marks in a row and a chance for more bonus money. He has it all so far today. Two hundred and fifty dollars worth. Going to be uh, 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 going to have to really make a skillful shot here because it is the three and the four. And nope, got the three, but not the four. A ten. One twenty one needed for four hundred. Three boxes to get it. Got a break here as the only two pins standing right now. Three, excuse me, two and four. That's 
That's what he's looking at, and that's what he was waiting for with that piece of wood to cut. Oh! I'll tell you. When you when you're hot, you're hot. He totally and completely missed it. And the ball came back and made it. Just amazing. Ron Henson looking at the one, two, nine, and ten. Nope. It's an eight. Ninety four. One, two, four, and ten. No wood. Let's see if he can make this one. Got the three pins on the left, kicked a piece of wood over, but the 10 didn't go. Ball, no. And for a moment I thought the ball was back there, but it's a piece of rolling wood, which came out from behind another piece. Still rolling around. There, you see it waiting for it to settle down. Now fires. And he gets a 10 for a 104. One ten plus what he gets on the next ball. That does it, he's over 400. money. Boy, he's loading up today. And he had seven more. What a finish. Six in a row for Peter Surrett. Wow, and two of those six have been over 400. 433. We'll be back right after this. It's bonus time. We have money to give away. Our high-low jackpot, the old 1710, is up to 1,250, and the home viewer jackpot is up to $500. So why don't you send in a card? You know what this is all about the home viewer jackpot. We're just asking you to make sure you send in on a postcard, not in a letter, and just one per day. You send in uh, 30, obviously, in a month, but one per day. Uh, a guess as to what you think the total pinfall would be, both bowlers combined, on a day that you hope that I will draw your card. And uh, if we have a winner, we will empty out the drum and start all over again at $50. When we don't, we keep adding cards, and we also keep adding money uh, until somebody eventually does get it. And as you know, we allow 10 either side. Here's the address to send it to, by the way, which is Candlepin Bowling, WCBB TV, 5 TV Place, Needham, Massachusetts, and the zip 02192. And uh, 764 is the total today, isn't it? Yes, that's what it is. So 10 either side of that would win the $500. 
But even if I draw a card that's nowhere near that, that person is rewarded with a handsome gift from the Parker Pen Company. All right. Let's find out now if we have a winner. Seven sixty-four. So seven fifty-four to seven seventy-four would win it. And uh, this is from Phyllis Kelly of Natick, Massachusetts, and her guess is six eighty. So next week it's going to be up to five hundred and fifty. Twelve hundred and fifty dollars. This is the sixth time that you've been up here. One seven ten. Nope. You stay here, Ronnie, and, and right over here, please. That's it, so the camera can get a good look at you. Well, let's see. You have, uh, son of a gun, I can't find any bonus money for you, can I? But $350, and uh, we have here a permanent reminder that you were on this program. You did make a roll off and, and, and make it, yeah. and now... It's a great, a, a fine way to start, isn't it? Throw a lob on the first ball. Yeah. You're, ner you're not a bit nervous at all at the time. <laughs> but you did settle down, and I'm sure that you feel pretty comfortable now, and we don't bite you here or anything, so you're going to come back and see yeah, us again, aren't you? Yeah. All right. Good luck to you. All right, Peter. Where are you putting all these things? Huh? Yeah, you put them right up on top of my bureau. <laughs> well, so you can get a good look at it. Wake up, wake up in the morning and take a look at it, huh? Mm -hmm. All right. Gee, seven hundred dollars for winning and four hundred and fifty dollars more in bonus money, huh? Yeah. How'd you like that spare you made in the eighth box of the? Oh, uh, I, the I can't believe that one. <laughs> you get in your heart, I guess the brakes just go your way. Well, I'll tell you, you know. Uh, if, as I said at the time, I think when you're hot, you're hot. And uh, let's see, if you're going to be hot again, Jack Quinn is coming back from Fremont, New Hampshire. He'll be your challenger. And there's another guy a couple of weeks from down the line that uh, may be here, huh? Yep. Okay, maybe. your big brother. All right. Thank you. Okay, Don Gillis for the whole crew. See you next week. Bye-bye, everybody.